So, yeah. So, uh, I know it's in Chinese, so uh, in case you don't know. Um, uh, Hi all. Hi. So this is Chetan from India. I will be speaking on scaling TVs of data with Apache Spark and Scala at production. So it's working or not? Hello? So how many of you have been worked with Apache Spark or kind of ETL tools? OK. Anyone has experience working with a Scala or functional programming? OK. So we'll talk about uh, kind of architecture plus the uh, oh, oh, oh. Architecture and optimization plus uh, how to schedule the jobs, which which is a kind of scalable. So, what about me? I'm a kind of technical lead at uh, Action Labs and open source contributor at Apache Spark, HBase, and Alexia language. And I'm from Ecos uh, University. So. We will be talking on uh, Apache Spark and Scala, RDD, and uh, data frame, data site, Apache operations, and uh, all the Apache Spark components, and how to Z engineer the ETL platform, rethink about fast data architecture, and the parallelism and concurrency. So, Apache Spark is the open source tool that helps you to parallelize and uh, provide the concurrency, parallelism to process the TBs of data. So Spark is a fast and general purpose cluster computing uh, framework that helps you to uh, process the data on the cluster. So when you uh, process the data on the single machine, you scale vertically. But when you process the data on the cluster, you scale horizontally. And that can provide you the concurrency plus parallelism. So Spark is, can provide you the uh, four framework. One is a Spark SQL. The way you provide the SQL, okay, the kind of linear algebra you can do with SQL that can be applied with the Spark. You can do graph processing. You can do machine learning and AI, and you can do the streaming of the data. When I talk about streaming, that does mean without ending the connection, you can extend the data. And Scala is the functional paradigm, uh, functional programming, which executes on top of the JVM. So it's, it is a strongly typed. It's not like untyped like Python, but it, it, it takes strongly typed programming language. It can perform all the lambda calculus and the higher order function that you can apply like map and flat map and ATC. And Scala supports the lazy evolution of the of the um, strictly type the uh, functions. So if you have the collection and you create the graph when you apply the all higher order function like map, flat map, and everything, and when you apply the action, at that time it will execute the entire graph. So mainly, Spark has a three type of data structure. One is the RDD, second is the data frame, and third one is data set. So RDD is the primary available data structure in Spark. So it stands for you want to, if you want to distribute the data across the cluster, the primary data structure that you need to deal with is RDD. So now you can scale and partition and split the RDD across the cluster. It could be the NDFS, it could be S3 bucket. So for example, RDD is a resilient distributed data set and when I talk about resilient means what it's not like a human kind but it's like when you when you create the collection 
and when you apply the transformation and again get the RDD. So for example, in this example, you have one RDD, you apply the transformation, get RDD 2 and you apply the transformation, you get RDD 3. Okay, so everything is immutable here and that's why it is trade safe. So, so if you have RDD, you apply one transformation, for example, map, right? And when you get the RDD number 2 and apply the flat map and for example, your cluster got crashed or something happened wrong. So when you again reiterate, the Spark will do checkpoint and take from the RDD2. And it, it provides you compile time safety. So what happened that when you when you work with uh, uh, TBs of data, you need compile time safety. If, if you get runtime safety, what will happen that if you build your Spark job and execute the Spark job on, on the cluster, for example, it's like 400 GB of data. Now what will happen that that job will provide error, exception on runtime. And, and when you do debugging on the distributed computing, it, it's pain, it kind of cumbersome. You need to wait, you need to check the job log and everything and then you will get to know that this job got failed. But same paradigm can provide the compile time safety. So before you execute, it will tell you that on the compile time, this is the error. So RDD can be integer type of RDD, RDD can of string type of RDD and it could be binary, it could be double. So whatever primitive type of uh, data type available in any programming language can be used in the RDD. So Spark can support the lazy evolution. So when I talk about evolution of the uh, collection, so what will happen that in this thing, as I said earlier, in example one, when you get RDD, you apply the transformation, you get RDD number two, you again apply the transformation, you get RDD number three. And until you apply the exon, it will not execute. So it will not take the memory, it will not consume the uh, disk, it will not consume the memory. So in example number two, you can see the A, right? Where I say A means exon. So we'll talk about what do you mean by uh, uh, transformation and what, what do we mean by the exon. So, Apache Spark has a two kind of operations. One is the transformation and second is the action. So, Spark can support all the general purpose, statistical, all the mathematics, set theory and all the IO operation that can be supported using the Spark. If you want to do any kind of algorithm, if you are doing the uh, kind of research or paper, it can be applied using this. It's a very high level API and high level framework. So you, you can do intersection, subtract, a Cartesian join, you can do flat map, map, filter, you can do partition, you can do group by, you can apply all the actions. Actions are, you, you see the reduce, collection, aggregate, fold, first, take, for each, those are the actions. So now, it could be confused to you that whether we can use the RDD, what purpose we can use the RDD, what purpose we can use the uh, data frame, what purpose we can use the third uh, kind of uh, collection type. So I'll talk about when to use RDD, when to use data frame, when to use data set. So, so if, you, if you care about control of the collection type, if you care about how your data looks like, if you if you don't care about all the higher order functions, if you don't care about schema or structure of data, if you don't care about optimization performance and efficiencies, if you don't care about performance of the your Spark job, if you don't care about in inadvertent efficiencies, so if you have this kind of characteristics in your data set, then you can use the RDD. So RDD is without the structure of data. So there is no header, there is nothing uh, like structured data in RDD. So when I talk about inadvertent inefficiencies, that does mean, for example, in this example, what's happening in this example that I'm trying to filter one RDD in form of case, project, sprint, and, and n number of stories. So I'm saying that you create one kind of uh, structure on top of the RDD with three fields, project, sprint, and number of stories. And project should equal to finance, and then you map, map it means iterate. And then you iterate and get the 
get the filter of this sprint, sprint where you have the uh, sprint is equal to finance, and then you get take hundred element from the RDD, and then you apply the for loop, saying for each, and then you print out the number of uh, stories per number of project. So in this example, so I feel this example cannot provide you inadvertent inefficiencies in RDD because when you talk about, uh, let's take one example. If you are trying to read one table which has around uh, one TB of data, and then you first read all data, okay, then you apply the for any any transform function like map, right? And then you filter it. So what will happen that you are, when you apply the map, the it would have the sorry, it it will have the entire iteration on your available RDD. So if RDD has the one thousand records, it will it will try to iterate 1000 records on that and then you are applying the filter so it's, you should apply first filter you take only those data which you need and then you do all the transformation on the cluster so what will happen when you do the suffering on top of the cluster it can paralyze well it can concurrent well and then you do join so this all talks about inadvertent inefficiencies in RDD and structured data in Spark is two two type of uh, structure you can use. You can use a data frame and you can use data sets. So when I talk about data frames, it is strongly typed collection in Spark. It has the ability to use powerful high order function. So all lambda function you can use in the mathematics that could be applied on top of the Spark and Scala. So Spark SQL optimized execution engine, catalyst and tungsten that takes care about your project plan. If you provide the source code in Scala, first map and then select and then group by, then cluster by, then, then order by. So it will optimize and create the one flow of the graph and take care that which functions will be executed first. So it can provide you the uh, best performance. And it can be constructed from JVM object and and could be could be transformed using the higher order functional transformation like map, filter, and flip map. So a data frame is the a data set organized into n number of named columns. So data frame is simply a type alias of available data set of row. So when I talk about data frame equal to data set of rows. So if you use the structured API in Apache Spark. So as I said, we have SQL, we have data frames, and we have we have data set. So only the only the one difference you can see in between uh, in between data frames and data set is what that it could be possible the object of data frame can be type safe or or, or untype safe. But when you use the data set, it is strongly type safe. So if you say integer, you cannot pass the you cannot pass the string. So structured API in Apache Spark. So if you use the SQL, what will happen? Syntax error could be runtime. So some people what they do, they create the object of Apache Spark and then they supply the string of SQL, and then they think that this job will be. Uh, performance optimistic, but it's not possible because what happened that if you are trying to join in your SQL query and the SQL query has uh, some type or some mistake, right? So you need to wait for two hours, three hours to, until the job get completed. And and the data frame can provide syntax error on compile time, but analysis error can be runtime. So for example, if you are trying to join and you get some error like ambiguity error with the column name A. So when you join two data frame, it could be possible the join primary key is available two columns because you forgot to drop that column. So this kind of analysis error would be available only runtime. So if you want all the analysis error plus index error on the compile time, then you need to use the, the high, high level API of data set, which can provide the syntax error plus the analysis error on compile time. So as I said, um, data set is the alias of uh, data frame. So if you create the data frame is equal to, to 
available data set of rows which came in 2016 in apache spark 2.0 so this is example simple okay you create the past rdd and then you convert to df means means the available data frame and then you provide the column names project print number of stories now when you want to accomplish the filter group by some and then aggregation you just say past data frame dot filter project should be equal to finance and group by by sprint and aggregation sum of number of stories is equal to count and you apply the some action like uh, so 100 and then you apply, apply only uh, 100 limit so if you don't apply the syntax number line number 6 which is a aggregation sum of number of stories is count and then you say you only want to just limit to 100 records then you apply the so 100 so what will happen that when you do the so it will be faster because you are only casing the 100 rows now this can be also done in form of sql you can provide the you can create the view view is a temporary view in the in this park and then you can supply the sql string like select explain some of the number of stories as count from audit where project is equal to finance group by spring limit 100 right but now in this example performance of this okay when you compare the run time performance are same but if you compare the compile time performance best option is going with this example because this can supply the scala domain name specification language okay and third thing is why to use structure api okay so you can do in this way also same thing you, you can see here you can go with the sql you can go with the rdd we can you can go with the data frame when you go with rdd there is no structure you cannot think that which structure has what data but you can iterate in functional way and you can apply the map you want case of department and age and for all department you want age by one and then you reduce for all the tuple and create a1 c1 a2 c2 and then you apply the uh, kind of summation operation so what will happen every time it will do the summation of the operation here so this is the catalyst engine in spark what it can do once you create the sql ast right and then you have data frame then you have you have data set so it can generate the unresolved plan so this is the first logical plan and then once you get logical plan the catalyst engine will create the optimized logical plan for you and then it will generate choice the choose the best physical plan and it will apply the cost model when i talk about cost model it will do statistical distribution and find out that which function will take how much time and based on that it will select the best function from that and then it will convert to rdd so now you may be confused that why again we are coming to rdd so make sure that rdd is still there rdd is not gone but this rdd last rdd that you can see that's highly optimized rdd generated from the any collection type of object it could be data frame it could be data set and the last rdd is optimized lightweight and compressed mode and that's a threat safe with the compile time safety because still spark runs on primary rdd which is high level rdd that you can apply on that and rdd this is simple bytecode that can be executed on jvm so we will briefly talk about how you can use the data set api in apache spark 2.x uh, spark 2.x can provide you type safe operate on domain object with compiled lambda functions so what happened that if you provide the distribution uh, spark will create the rdd and split across the cluster okay and parallelly you apply the your your lambda function on every rdd and once you get the execution outcome from your function you can coalesce everything together and again apply the action and get the one outcome so in this example we are trying to read the json file and then we have case class case class is nothing like class with the 
with in java people say pojo uh, you provide uh, name is a string and age is integer so you create well employee ds you create the object of data set of employees and employees data frame as employee so you, you are saying that when you read the any data frame you are saying it should be in structure of employee and a simple way to create the structure for any rdd like in one line and then you say filter ds is equal to employees ds dot filter p and then so p dot age so once you create this kind of uh, object you will be able to iterate like function if you want name you can say p dot name and then here p dot age greater than 3 okay so now if you supply here string it will not execute it it will give you compile time error so data set can give you the compile time safety if you if you do same thing you create the view and then you say as uh, kind of select star from something where is equal to if it's age is integer you, you supply the string or something mistake you do here that can be only caught in when you execute the spark job so when you do run time spark job execution at that time it will give you error that error is known as the analysis <coughs> error so how it does the optimization in form of data frame so it create the first logical plan then it create the physical plan then it can create the highly optimized selected physical plan so you see here for example you have one parquet file and when you have one file so you are trying to read the events file and employee table then you want to do join right and then you get filter so for example when you join employees table with join events table employees id is equal to events eid and join and then you apply the filter here right so when you apply the filter here you are saying events of date is greater than this date in a string right so so this first plan will try to read both data one from the table and one from the parquet file and then it will do join right and then it will filter so as you know as much data you get from the your source and do the computing it will take more time but it may be possible you already know that you don't know you only want data for which is event is greater than 1st January 2015 right so rather you do join you first do the filter and get the data and then you do join right so I mean uh, in brief spark is not all about science it's just most about art you read little bit art rather than science and then you execute that the second example physical plan it scans the both data and do filter and join right and third thing what you can do you first get employees table and then first you filter and then you get scan and then you do join so that will be faster and physical plan automatically does the predicate push down and column pruning which columns are not required you can go with that and in terms of performance you can see here that that RDD is not faster than than data frame. So if you create the strongly typed data frame, that will be faster. And but you can see that performance with SQL and performance with this car I said, right? In terms of this are the same. Whether you provide SQL string or whether you do the functional way of Scala, both are same. When you do run time safety, but when you do compile time compile time is best to go with this color because it can provide you functional type and strongly type safety over there also one more thing you need to understand when you use the rdd and when you use the data set number of casing per the gb is much more faster in the strongly typed strongly typed data set api and serialization right so it's all about serialization. So earlier, if you use the RDD or the data frame, the serialization you apply is which Java serialization or or Kario serialization. But but when you use the data frame or sorry, when you use the strongly typed data set API, it provides the encoder API. And encoder API is much more way more faster than the Java and Kario serialization. So these are all the internal uh, specification and the performance uh, rules why when you use the 
strongly tied safety with the Spark data set API, how it, why is much more faster than RDD? So we'll briefly touch on, on the case study that I worked on. So every big data project, every ETL project, every uh, every data science project will have three component, okay? You will have most data like data warehouse and streaming bus. So mainly people use the data lake for low cost and scale. People use data warehouse for faster queries and transactional reliability. People use a streaming message bus for low latency of the data to ingest data with the, uh, Kafka or Kinesis like that. But when you want to make everyone talk each other, that's how you create your architecture, right? You can move data from your streaming message bus to, to the data lake and then you read data from data lake to data warehouse and then you then you query your data warehouse and get your data at any business intelligence tools like Tableau or, or Qlip View. So for example, streaming message bus is, is Apache Kafka which can, which can do uh, fast performance data ingestion and uh, Felisma, right? And once you get your data in Kafka message bus, you can ingest in HBase because HBase is a kind of a columnar storage and you can untap columnar storage. So you can ingest very fast away. So write is very fast in HBase and when you use a hive, it could be your data warehouse so you can scale horizontally and you can provide uh, uh, queries and optimize the queries and everything. Uh, make sure that this all open, uh, open source project can support, is supporting all the uh, partition and uh, high order functions, it supports the the way you create the splitting of the data and partition it and then you provide the uh, type safety on top of that. So challenges we face like what actually business want, you explain us who, what, when, where, why, how retailing is working, right? That's what your top manager want. Technically, we I'm talking about changing the game with the re-engineering uh, fast data processing platform in retail business. So, so we had around weekly ETL kind of data refresh and uh, it, it was a batch Spark and Hadoop job execution and it had a lot of failure with unreal Spark cluster because it was linear sequential job execution with a broken data pipeline and joining 17 billion transitional records with skewed data nature. Okay. Data deduplication, outlet and item in details, scalability of massive data, 4.6 billion events on every weekly data refresh, and processing historical data, one-time bulk load, it was around 30 TB of data, 17 billion transitional records. So you, the solution that open source architecture can provide is what? 5x performance improvement by re-engineering entire data lag to analytical engine pipeline and propose highly concurrent, elastic, non-blocking, asynchronous architecture to save customers 22 hours runtime, 8 hours from 30 hours and 4.6 billion events, 10x performance implement in historical load of by under the hood algorithm optimization on 17 billion uh, events and benchmark was 1 hour uh, execution time only, right? An MDM, obviously fuzzy logic and uh, when you compare either item is already there or not. So this kind of use case you can always see in e-commerce, retail and everywhere. So you may be confused that how it can be possible, all the solution has provided, right? So this is open source architecture that you can see here, right? So already the customer already had Oracle kind of legacy uh, RDBMS because you cannot say start everything from this uh, Spark. <laughs> And uh, data ingestion was using the queuing system, right? Uh, uh, Kafka and ingest to the edge base, then use the Hive for process data warehouse and uh, aggregated data, you get everything here. And then all transformation was using the Spark and Spark drill somewhere and you get uh, summarized your process data warehouse in the PostgreSQL because you cannot uh, expose APIs, okay? Uh, using the Hive. Hive is not for exposing APIs, it is for uh, analytics and uh, process data warehouse and scaling horizontally. 
mostly, I mean, I can say 85% of companies are using the Hive to scale their data. So they have all the different different product department like finance, HR, and recruitment, and everything. So each and every uh, product department will analyze their data using Hive to create the separate schema they call Data Mart for them. And from the Postgre, you expose API that can be visualized on Angular JS G3 or Qlook View kind of that. So this is high level <coughs> architecture. So when you talk about fast data architecture, you need to think about three things. Unified fast data processing engine that provides the scale at scale at data lag, the reliability and the performance of data warehouse, and low latency of streaming. When you choose any technology, whether it's a Spark or Flink or anything, you take care of these three principles. So the issue was what? Sequential job execution or two parallel job execution. So we were trying to read data for outlet, item, and transactional organization, or the company manufacturer in sequential mode. Once job one will get successful, we execute job number two. Kind of that, right? So it takes more time, obviously. So what we did, kind of parallelism, right? You create the outlet, you create uh, items and organization and files, and you understand your business, that which query requires, which which transformation, which, which, which uh, action requires what kind of data. Okay, so you already know outlet, item, organization, and the files are the master tables. So you need to have those tables first. And then transitions and outlet by file, transition by date are the tables which are trying to read and join the master tables, right? And outlet by file tables is it in that structure, the data, physical data stored is by file. So each and every file ID will have separate data and separate partition. So when you are trying to read using the hive, it is only reading that folder. So you are not reading, trying to read the kind of O, o, o of N, you are trying to read O of 1. So that's how it provides the, uh, your fast data uh, performance. And also we, we, we use the YARN external suffer service which can, which can do runtime uh, hyperparameter change like number of executors, number of driver, driver memory, executor memory for specific job. So what happened that people sometimes provide the over allocation of the resources to some job and cluster will get blocked for other jobs, right? So when you use the YARN external suffer service, it will runtime change the hyperparameters, resources, number of resources allocated to each and every jobs. So you need to remove the over allocation of resources for small jobs because it is getting blocked by jobs. We should not take most, much more resources and memory and uh, uh, disk intensive jobs. So if you do like that, job will run a little slowly, but it can utilize the your entire cluster with non blocking approach for other jobs. So you want other jobs should not be blocked just due to your job. So you provide, you understand number of records in the table. After that you provide the resources to that. So you just not, just uh, just provide too much resources to some job and that can block your entire cluster. When you want to just provide the uh, number of resources you take care about the available uh, business transformation, available uh, number of data and everything. So this is one example of hyperparameter tuning. So number of parallel tasks is equal to number of executors into number of cores. So if you want to have a number of 64 parallel tasks, you need to provide number of executor is equal to 8 and number of cores is equal to 8. So you will have 64 parallel tasks, okay? And when you need to uh, cut down the memory or when you need to just bump up memory, those two hyperparameters, you need to take care about your complexity of your algorithm and transformation and then you... Just go down and say, sorry. Okay. I don't just, just run so. so here you can see master is a yarn. Yarn is one kind of resource manager that can schedule your Spark jobs on top of the Hadoop. And deploy mode is a cluster. You can provide local here if you have only one node on your same machine. And the driver memory is 6 GB, executor is 12. 
Uh, so best thing to understand both hyperparameters executors is 12 and the uh, driver memory is 6 GB. It is what you can apply this formula to get parallel number of tasks. And you can provide dynamic allocation unable true. So what will happen? This job can change number of allocation of resources on runtime and suffer service unable true. Okay. Executor core is 10. So each and every executor will have number of cores. Okay. So if I say one executor will have 10 cores. And you do also analysis and understand number of records and everything. And then you change and little bit, you know, you need to have a try. It's like if you do machine learning, you think which algorithm you should apply, regression, you apply the um, exibus, you, you apply the um, kind of uh, any algorithm that you think. So you need to understand the custom uh, interpretation of the algorithm and then you provide that. So when you reduce the memory and cost but increase the executors, this can allow us to better utilize all the resources on the cluster without locking others out. So when you use the cluster, it, it would be possible that your entire team is working on the same cluster, right? So you should not block your cluster to yourself. You allow other to execute and provide the um, best uh, optimization of uh, your cluster. If you reduce the executors and use the same memory and cores, this will run slower, but it will allow others to use the cluster box in parallel. So this thing is talk about physical split up of your data. So, so when you apply map and reduce, right, it can generate the output file at HDFS. So when you have so many uh, files, right, so when you read data, it can, it can try to get uh, you know impact on disk IO, memory IO, file IO and all problems. So if you want to avoid this issue, what you can do, you tell to Spark that if you have the partition, you only want one file. If it generates the 20 files, 25 files, it, you when you read, all the downstream jobs will get impacted on that, right? So you can apply the partitioning, repartitioning and call as function on top of the available data frame so that can reduce the uh, that can reduce the um, impact on top of the all the jobs you can also say spark.sql.files.max records per file this hyperparameter can help you to create no, less number of files to the partitions also you understand the it should not be everything should be streaming you can do frequent batch job that can help you to uh, just not block entire cluster, reduce the garbage collection, um, and provide the performance and everything here. And kicking off a bad job and immediately scale to right size, it needs to be, it does, it works, and it goes away, right? It should not block, otherwise you need to sometimes, I mean, I believe if you say your latency, okay, your ETA, your SLA is just, uh, is, is, is uh, less than two minutes or three minutes, you can, you can, um, you can execute kicking off the frequent uh, all the uh, spark jobs and then you uh, scale it on right size and then close it out. So this is example, so I hope you got this is, uh, point. It's not, not be like streaming is faster than batch. You can al always execute frequent batch and close that. So this is one example. We were trying to read transaction data, outlet data, items data, and file data. Then we were doing the join. And you believe it's 27 TB of data. Okay, this is first mistake. I mean, you learn everything from your mistake itself, right? It's not like you get everything should be run on first time. So it was giving this kind of error. See, this quota existed. Executor lost failure. Container killed by yarn on existing memory limits, right? So what we did, we created, so these all are the hive tables. You can see on the other side, right? Hive external table with park with partition, okay? So we created, if you see the first failure, right? This was a failure. This is a failure. I hope you can see. And uh, so these are the hive tables. So what we did, we created one more table, one more table in hive. And that is just, uh, internal hive table with the parquet format, non-partition data. So you read all the data, okay, do the join, 
and dump all data here. And then, then, then exchange data to red set. So point was that these all are the high tables. You cannot perform the uh, you cannot expose your RESTful web services on the high. So you need to get all those data, aggregated data to Redshift because Redshift can, it's like Postgre, okay? It can scale um, n number of uh, records when you expose the API. So we we got this on temporary view and we did insert to high managed table. When I talk about managed table, it's nothing but the internal table. And then we dumped all data from high to Redshift and we did all this su successful approach that you can see here, tune the hyperparameters and uh, enable the dynamic resource allocation and external young support service. Okay? And this is the one way that we uh, we did on top of that. And you can see one TB of output suffer of data. And this is very hard to get this color, you see? This color you can see. So when you use the Spark UI, you can iterate the number of tasks and number of reducer and everything. Blue color means everything successful. Purple color means some, some errors and red color means it's failure. So last but not least, and you can use the Spark 2.3 on Kubernetes, right? And it's containerized big data application, okay? So it's lightweight to spawn of your Spark master and workers and executors on top of the containers. And this is a way to submit the Spark job, right? How everything is possible because of open source technology and power of open source, Scala and Spark, okay? Any questions? Any questions? It could be anything. You can ask me anything. BI, analytics, or big data, or ETL, or functional programming, or this. Is it typical to run Spark on Kubernetes? Yeah, you can use uh, Spark on Kubernetes, one job also. So if you have the small, your, your own laptop, you can install the kubectl. Kube and create the config YML file. And uh, so what will happen, you can execute your Spark job on Kubernetes master. And all the ports, Kubernetes ports will be all your Spark jobs. So starting the Spark job, starting the all the internal services of the Spark will be much more faster. So you can execute and so you can do. Yeah, so um, first you talk about how much is the volume of your source data, and then you understand what exactly you need to do. You need to do um, pivot, you need to do join, you need to have a common segregation, those stuff. So uh, based on that, you, you do capacity planning of your cluster and get the number of nodes, number of executors, number of cores, and memory, and everything. And then you spawn up your cluster, and then you execute the job. Anything? Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, so the next session we will start at uh, 11 15. So that will be 10 minutes break. Right. So we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'll do some pictures. I'm sure. Okay.